how you doing this is V diamond in the rough welcome to my channel um, I will say to all the new gems out there what I've done previously is um, I've done some whipping chats where I talk about holidays um, so I've done uh, Egypt, I've talked about Egypt, South Africa, started the one on um, when I went to Northern Europe and but today I'm actually going to be talking about my Esperance trip which is one that I just took only a week or so ago as of recording this video anyway. Um, now Esperance is my hometown and uh, yeah so I'm going to talk through and share photos of Esperance so that you can actually see where I, the small country town that I live, have lived in. Not that small, but it's smallish. Um, we'll mainly see the beaches. And that's the big attraction in Esperance, even though those beaches are off the Antarctic Ocean and are very, very cold. Esperance, um, is about a 700 kilometer just over 700 kilometer drive uh, before i go any further i will let you know i am working on treasure studios arts uh, the mako uh, the white pointer he and i it is in squares i thought i'd share that um link below if i remember to let, put the link below there'll be a link below on um how to purchase that one if you like it um, I'll try and put a picture in as well so you can see what it looks like square drills square drills I love well I used to love square drills I was put off square drills by it when I did one order and went to rounds but when I'm trying out companies that I haven't used before I do like to get there and go with a square because it's the square that tells me the clock that, that gives me the better idea of quality so with squares though i do go to the tweezers uh, and i check a board in most cases when i do a um, do squares now i do check a board and you will see that i am actually working between all the colors that are within this section are actually all out in trays which you can see up here um, this is actually a a b board um, i do have two and those two are um, directly in front up ahead of me and they hold 10 trays each this section only at this stage for what i've looked at and worked out only requires 14 color different colors um yeah so and uh, those beadboards are hand painted hand crafted uh, and are from Diamond moon shop which i will try and remember to put the link down below for that too okay so esperance population of about fifteen thousand. so it's not that small uh it used to be a lot smaller when i grew up there i can tell you that much esperance is one of these towns um to me has a very clicky very clicky um people uh esperance is a very it's a sport well there's a lot of sport and there's a lot of retirement retirees in esperance so that gives you an idea of what it's like there i will say that um down in esperance i have my mum and my stepfather uh, my son, my daughter-in-law, and now my grandson live in Esperance. So um, I went down to Esperance to spend time and to meet my grandson. He was two weeks old when I went down there. He, he was just on two weeks, I think. Yeah, yeah, just on two weeks. Oops, I don't want that one. Um, so yeah i went down there to see my grandson that was born only like on the 31st of may 
and like all people my grandson is beautiful <laughs> okay so that's why I've gone down there my uh, ex-husband and his family are all down there and there is also members of my uh, extended family down there uh, it is a farming community there is also tourism and there is also fishing and it is tourism that uh, is the good reason is why people come to visit it does get cold down there but the nights are not as cold there as um as they are here in perth um yeah so much nicer going down to a uh, coastal town in winter you tend not to think it's a good idea but when you get beautiful weather you can get some horrible weather down there but when you actually get some beautiful weather you'll find that it's a stunning stunning place to be but trust me don't swim in the water in winter okay um so yeah i put some footage in here of um, the trip down which shows the difference of um between traveling from Perth down to Esperance, the different um, countryside, I suppose, would be the best way to put it. What what you'll see is, you know, out of Perth, it's a little bit woodier, um, t higher trees. Then you get through to the farming communities and the wheat belt and that. Um, a lot of open fields. And then <clears throat> you get closer to Esperance and you get the green fields. <laughs> the lovely fresher fields of Esperance where um, although there are semi semi it is semi dry it's still green when it's really dry and brown it's not not pretty but it is a very pretty pr very pretty town as I will show you but yeah video footage of heading down different areas we went from Perth Williams Wagen Lake Grace, Newdigate, Lake King, Ravy, then Esperance. But about a 750k drive from Perth. Um, time wise, I think we left at about half seven. That was a good start to the day, too. I uh, left about half seven. We left the house at half seven. When we were bagging the car the night before, Nathan made the discovery that he, he'd done something very, very special. He'd left his wallet at work. Yep. That in itself was really special. So we had to go uh, into where he works, uh, pick our traffic time. And uh, so we left later, much later than we anticipated. Hang on. And oops, I don't have one of those out. Where are they? This is where I do a stab and grab with a drill pen. I will put that corner piece in because I don't have that one out either. <coughs> that one there. I only need one of these. Come on out. There we go. Um, yeah, I do actually go all the way outside when I'm doing these before I actually start filling in in the middle. Um, just yeah, pattern that I tend to, to tend to do. Um, yeah, so a fair size drive. We had rain on the way down. Lovely weather there. Are you filming the road trip? Some of it. Hey, well, um... Why didn't you bring your thing up?
sections are just absolute wind it was so windy it was horrible the wind traveling down but we did stop so Nathan was like we got to a ravey and it's like I've got to have something to eat like we've stopped for other stuff around the place but uh, on the way through but at ravey you know 200 kilometers to go and it's like there's a fair distance between the downs, so it's like, well, I'm going to stop here for something to eat. And I said, well, there used to, there's a, a bakery in Ravi. If you will stop there, and you can have your pie and all of a sausage roll, whatever. So we drove into Ravi, and the pie shop was shut. It was because of COVID. It actually COVID had claimed its victim. Small country town where tourism. Yeah, it relies on tourism when you shut another one traveling. Yeah, it affects everything. But that shut down. But while we we're driving, like I've, we, I've seen that it was closed, not realizing it was shut down, but saw it was closed. But then out of the corner of my eye, I saw something really, really bright. So we stopped. And it was a, it was a lolly store. Basically, it was uh, the like an old-fashioned lolly store and all the old lollies that um, as somebody of older generations the older lollies that we absolutely love so we went in and we brought whoops a range of uh, lollies chocolate coated coffee beans which is my favorite got some honeycomb got some chocolate ginger chocolate for my mum just as a little you know here you go <laughs> Um, and had a chat with the owner. It was really, it's a really cool store, really bright. So pictures here. I did walk along the front of it and uh, show you what the front looked like because it was so bright you couldn't miss it. Um, yeah, so that was what we saw then, and then when we actually got into Esperance, um, yeah, got into Esperance, um, not too bad of a time, but I was, you know, like my mum, my stepfather, my mum was actually going, you're going to visit the baby, and I went, not like this, too tight. Um, they know what we're here. Just say you know too tired. They know that we're here, but then a little bit later on, uh, it was like, okay, I've showered, I've freshened up. Let's go see see my grandbaby. <laughs> so I got my first cuddle of him that night. Right, just going to fill these gaps in with a pen. Um. So yeah, got my first cuddle. The next day, had a bit of a sleep in. Next day, I got up and went and had another cuddle. Well, Nathan did some things around the house and helped out. Um, my stepfather is 95. Um, yeah, 95 and still getting around. Still got all his faculties phenomenal to see but uh, he's had one hip replacement uh, he needs a second but he's too old for it to be done so um, Nathan was Nathan's one of those people that can't sit around as you're fully aware for those of you, those of you gems that have been watching me for a while if Nathan's got nothing to do it's very painful around the house because he finds something to do um, 
But yeah, so he turned around and with my mum turned around and I said, Rightio, what jobs do you need done? And she's like, oh, you're here on holidays. He goes, no, nah, I'm not sitting around doing nothing. What jobs do you need done? So um, he got to and did a few jobs around the house um, while I was actually visiting visiting Bob. Um, yeah. Um, then that afternoon... So we didn't spend a lot of time at my my son's place because it wasn't basically it's a crowded house situation. Quite a few people there. Oops, sorry guys, I'll just turn mute my um, notifications. But so we went to. Um, so in the afternoon after you know we'd had a lazy afternoon after lunch but during lunch um my stepfather was talking to nathan about all the different places to go through the beaches all of that you know giving the rundown on the beaches and which ones to go on that he can drive his four-wheel drive on um all that kind of things so in the afternoon instead of sitting around the house we went for a drive to wiley bay Drove along the beach and took some gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Um, I do look at some of these pictures. go oh, that's a custom that's a custom yeah <laughs> I'm in trouble if I keep going with customs but doesn't matter customs are good <laughs> uh, um, so yeah we go from the long Wiley Bay drive along the beach stop took some pictures I'll drop in some video footage here so you can uh, check it out what it's like to drive on the beach and just to stand and take pictures and I think I've got some video footage as well of just the the ocean lucky um Esperance has very oh, that was the wrong color Esperance has a very 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 white beaches um, there is a fair amount of seaweed on some of them but there's other beaches that just don't have seaweed and oh just beautiful.
We didn't do much after that. We, you know, went home. Well, actually, we went by it. And I don't mean to be racist here in any way, shape or form. Um, but we went to the hot bread shop. You know, Nathan's like going, oh, I'd love a pie. So we went to the hot bread shop, which is actually it's a Vietnamese family that run it. So, um, yeah, it was just so cool to, to go in there and say, oh, we're going to the French hot bread shop. And yeah, then he sees Vietnamese he's like, hmm, you, you're right there. For, it's a French hot bread shop. <laughs> it's more to do with what they produce, not, not the people inside. Um, yeah, because you know he's like, no, they're Vietnamese. They should be cooking up <laughs> all these other different dishes, um, but that's wrong. It's like, no, yeah, no, that's no. Um, the the French hot bread shop's been going for a long time in Esperance, and they do really well. And oh my gosh, the pies, the cakes, all of that, all amazing, all amazing. Um, yeah, so the next day, so obviously I've gone and gotten baby hugs <laughs> whenever I could. Next day, um, we had the baby shower. Uh, because of COVID, they didn't do a pre baby a shower, baby shower before Bub was born. The restrictions on COVID had been lifted. So they did a baby shower for after, um, which was pretty cool, which is good, you know. I couldn't make it to a, I couldn't come down for a baby shower if it was before Bub was born, but I could with uh, after because of the changes to the restrictions. Um, Esperance in itself, I will say, recorded no cases of COVID. They had, their boundaries were, their, the region was um, really strictly kept people out. Um, yeah, they did it. They good, did a good job of just basically, they closed the borders and no, the, the borders into the region and that was it. No one in or out, not unless you were local farmer. Um, farmers were obviously allowed to travel around because Oh, well, that's I need to. Um, so yeah, we the day after the baby shower, we headed to Lucky Bay to camp for two nights. We'd paid for a, a, a campsite, so we set up camp and um, yeah, I'll share some views from our camp. We had the closest, or one of the closest uh, sites. Whoops, that one ended up on the floor. Uh, <laughs> closest, um, one of the closest sites to the beach. Um, there was nobody between us and the beach, just bushes. Right, so it's quite a beautiful, beautiful spot couple of things with there normally when Nathan and I go camping we end up in locations that you need to bring your own toilet you need to bring your own shower um, or the toilets are actually what they call long drops um, and I struggle with long drops so we normally take our own porta potty uh, yeah my dad turns around and says that's not camping and it's like well yes it is <laughs> Because where you're glamping, it's like, well, not quite, but pretty close. Because we've got everything built into the um, four-wheel drive. The shower is built in. Uh, hot water, you know, hot water system is built in. Yeah, good setup. Um, but yeah, we went for a drive around. Just for a drive on Lucky Bay, we went. We actually did do a walk um, around the head a little bit. Hang on, W. Yeah. And it's a cool, cool little world, cool little place to go to. Cool, nice place to visit. Beautiful, beautiful sunshine. We had, I will say, on one we had rain one night, but that's all good. On our, so we set up camp. We went to, we actually drove along Lucky Bay, 
was it? Yeah, I think we yeah we drove along Monkey Bay a little bit at, on the beach. Um, didn't go too far. Tide was tide was in, so when you're on a on a beach, you don't want to go too far with the tide in. You get stuck. Um, so we go in a certain way and then came a certain de de length and then turned around and came back and came back to our camp. When we set when we'd set up, we'd set up one way. Um, only to find out that the people that go around and check to make sure that you'd paid for your camp fees, all of that, and you knew where everything was, they came around. Um, we'd set camp up where we had driven the four-wheel drive face in and set the tent up here, the shower on that side. Uh, when they saw us, confirmed we'd paid, paid for all the parking, done all of that. And then they turned around and said, um, we're really sorry to do this to you but your vehicle needs to be reversed in just in case there's an emergency if we have to get you to vacate uh, the area quickly yeah we need you to be fat your car facing out so that you don't need to reverse out to get anywhere and, and block any other traffic it's just so you can drive straight out um, so we had our tent and all that set up uh, for that for the way the vehicle was facing and then we had to turn around and move ev well not everything we left the tent where it was but we had to move the on suite we had to set up everything so that it worked um, for us we also found out that there was no fires allowed so normally when we camp we have a we have a fire pit that contains all the fire but yep no we couldn't have a fire so normally what we do when we camp we have a fire and Nathan and I and if any anybody else we're camping with tend to sit around the fire and just talk but <laughs> no fireplace and uh, it was cold outside we did sit under the annex but uh, yeah Nathan cooked dinner that's when we go camping he cooks I do the dishes and clean up works fine works really well um, so for us um, I will say that we were very in that with the campsite we I think at one stage we got a message Nathan got a message on his phone and he went oh we got signal here um, we had 4G so normally when we go camping we end up in a place most places where there is no internet whatsoever and I'd even plan for not having internet I'd set some pictures up and gone righty I won't be in range righty well but we actually did have internet um, <laughs> so Nathan and I actually sat back and watched Netflix on my um on my phone. <laughs> yep, that's camping. Not. <laughs> but yeah, we we um yeah we watched Netflix. We went to bed early. Normally we sit up till probably eleven, twelve o'clock. Um, but there was just nothing else to do except sit there and look at each other or. It's just funny how a fire changes the atmosphere at a, at a campsite. So, but yeah, we'd gone to bed early, woken up in the morning and uh, breakfast, and then we were off just to go and have a look at everything that was, uh, that was in this national park. Um, yeah, so we went, the plan was to go to Rossiter Beach, drive that one and then come back. Um, drive out to a set Dun, I think it was Dunn's Rock, go back on the road and then come back up from there. We, however, got to Rossiter Beach and the tide was in. Uh, we had timed it not that well with the tides. So uh, we got on the beach, drove along a little way and then turned around because we just weren't taking the risk. With one vehicle, when you're doing four-wheel driving on the beach one vehicle you are a bit more cautious when there's two vehicles it's okay because one can pull you out <laughs>
gambled. We're not having any luck with leeches today. Yeah. Um, so what we've got now, I'll share some pictures now with um, of Rossiter Bay. And then we went from Rossiter Bay, we went to, which one the furthest away, we went to Hellfire. Hellfire Bay, beautiful. Yet again, pictures of Hellfire Bay. The... We'll say, um, Nathan, we, we got, when we got out of the car, Nathan's like, oh. oh, is that the other side of the rocks? Is that what we're saying? No. I don't know, we can drive down there. Maybe. <laughs> I've got to go go we take a piss whatever you want to say in Australia that's what you say <laughs> or the guys say anyway um, he went to a spot and then uh, jumped back pretty quickly uh, because uh, this little critter hey, I need to jig uh, this picture here He looked like a kind of looked like a dugite, but we believe he actually might have been a tiger snake. Tiger snake. So we all know that most of the snakes in Australia are uh, most of the state snakes in WA are very venomous. Um, yeah, we joke about the fact that Australia's got so many animals that want to kill you. It's not funny, but still a beautiful place to visit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is um, yeah, it was a it was a decent sized snake. So Nathan's backed away from there. I've zoomed in with my camera to take a picture. It wasn't a very good picture, but um, there I did, did get a picture to try and see what type of snake it was. Um, and then we've walked along Hellfire Bay. N not Hell. Yeah, it was Hellfire. Hellfire Bay. and walked along that i was going to walk all the way to the end uh, and then back uh, but nathan's we got to a certain point and nathan right well, we'll go back now because we've got the other beaches to go and visit and check out and it's like okay but on the way back along the beach it was so we walked it not drove it you couldn't couldn't um walk on this couldn't drive down onto this beach we went along Hellfire Beach, Hellfire Bay. On the way back, Nathan's called out and gone, did you see that? And I'm like going, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> see what? Because he's a fair distance away and the waves crashing. It was beautiful, but yeah, they were very loud. And he's pointed and there was dolphins out in the bay uh, looked like they were chasing a school of fish, but they were doing somersaults out of the water. By the time I got my camera up and ready to record, that had their fun. But I will, I think I had some pictures where they, where I did manage to get one or two shots of them.
yeah. Um, walk back from hell. Walk back, <laughs> back to Hellfire Bay, up to the parking bay, and looked at the area where the uh, snake had been, and he had gone. And they said, oh, good, he's gone away. It's like, yeah, now you need to worry because we know there's a snake around. We don't know where he's gone. It's one thing to actually see the snake and know he's there. Once he's gone and you don't know where he's gone, you do get a bit like, where did you go? Where did you go? <laughs> so doing the good old heavy footsteps and all of that, which is um, one of the things that's really good to do when there is snakes around so they feel the vibration on the ground and uh, they know where you are and they stay away from you they don't deliberately attack it's more if you scare them like every other animal uh, if you scare them they have an interesting reaction so we've gone from there then gone to Thistle Cove um, now Thistle Cove uh, when we were going up there, there was um, a whistling rock. It did kind of whistle. You could hear it, and I'll, I think I've got footage here. Hopefully I can share that. Um, yeah it did kind of whistle um, there was a story as to why it whistled but um, it's it's a sad story um, it was basically a couple of boys had been washed off the rocks the sea had taken them um, so it's an indigenous story so the Aboriginals the um, it, it's something that happened with them a long time ago um, and that's represent the whistling it representing is the wailing mothers wailing at the sea to for their sons to be returned by the ocean which took them um, but while we're walking down to the thistle cove down to the beach Nathan we bumped into uh, a couple that were actually in their campsite beside us and Hang on. Mailman just brought me a package. I'm handling this one with uh, disinfectant wipes. I've got a rough idea where I think this one's is from, but um, with tracking of that one, it actually came via Wuhan. <laughs> so that's one place where you want to make sure you disinfect stuff that comes from there. Keep an eye out for the unboxing. Anyway, back to the story. Back to uh, putting these drills down. Where am I at? Um, for, yeah, so when we um, we met a couple at uh, Thistle Cove that were camping beside us, and guy had a um, bucket in his hand, and he'd actually caught some fish. So Nathan's immediate reaction is, I'm going back to the car, I'm getting my fishing rod, I'm going to put a line in. And uh, he disappeared. <laughs> oh, don't tell me I've just gone wrong colour. Yep, wrong colour. Wrong colour. Try that again. Um, yeah, he, he disappeared, just went and got his fishing rod. And then he went down onto the rocks to throw a line in. I went and walked down to Thistle Cove. There was a little river running through, um, or was a little stream running through from uh, into the ocean. 
got footage of it. It's like it's only little, but I took a little picture, took a little bit of video footage in there. So hopefully, it's just a little video footage. Um, just dropped a drill again. Hopefully. you in, enjoy that little bit of footage then uh, yeah walked around and I had to locate Nathan on the rock somewhere so I did quite a fair amount of walking to try and find him and eventually found him And we stood there for a while while he fished um, on the rock on the rocks, um, and he caught nothing <laughs> because one of the things that he were, that was fishing in the area. Oops, sorry guys. One of the things fishing in the area. Um, most of the fish in that area go for something with bait they don't tend to go for lures so but he tried um left thistle cove went back to the campsite had some lunch and then we went down did we do lucky bay yeah 
had some lunch. Well, no, we had kind of late lunch, if you call it lunch. Um, geez, I'm losing track of where I'm going on these drills. I generally stick to a pattern. That's what happens when you get interrupted. So yeah, we went to Lucky Bay. We went to Hellfire, Hellfire Thistle Cove. We had a quick look at Cape Le Grand, which is where we were going to. Um, we were going to get on that beach the next day to drive home. Um, and then we basically called it called it a day and went and back to camp. When uh, once we got into camp, I uh, went for a walk on Lucky Bay, on the beach, and went and got the beautiful white sand. So I'm gonna. There's video footage here of walking along the beach. Uh, not sh quite sure whether you get to hear the squeaking of the feet on the sand. I did take my thongs off and um, tried to make it squeak, which I did. Uh, but I looked at the video footage afterwards and went, oh my gosh, my feet look like they're bruised. They weren't bruised, just so you were aware that that's not bruising. Um, that's, my feet were cold as white for one. The flip side of that is that sand is so white that it made my feet look grey. Yeah. So ignore the condition of my feet. Just look at what they're... Just watch the sound. so white my feet look bruised my feet are not bruised <laughs> Yeah, so that's about it for the that day. We ended up in bed super early that night. <laughs> After dinner, it was just cold. It was cold. Um, we climbed into the tent, into our sleeping bags, and put Netflix on again and went to sleep watching a movie. <laughs> Netflix. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, from there the next morning we.
Hopefully we're up. And pack slide. We have had. Well, I had coffee. I didn't have breakfast. Um, but we packed up camp slowly and uh, headed out back on the way home. Went onto the beach on at Cape Le Grand. Drove about halfway around. Tide was too high. Um, Nathan wasn't taking the rich risk on the beach yet again. Was that opening just before the siren? Remember? Um, my seatbelt still stuck in the door. Purely because one vehicle, you get stuck, you're in trouble. Uh, these are beaches where you're likely to lose lose your vehicle. Um, and I can actually say there is people that have lost vehicles down on Lucky on um, Cape Graham, just because you know they don't watch what they're doing and they don't take notice of the tides. Um, yeah, so hopefully you got some good footage there. We've come back from camping and had shower, unpacked and had showers and um, I got dressed again and um, wet and saw grandbaby again, of course. Uh, and then came back for the night. Now, my, our nights was just sitting around doing, well, could have been sitting around doing nothing. However, when I go anywhere, anywhere, even if I'm flying, which won't be a while now, but even if I'm flying, I will take a diamond painting with me. Uh, so my our nights were just sitting around yakking uh, and I was diamond painting while we were all talking. You know, my, my stepfather, um, normally sits at the other end of the house even when I visit normally um, he's usually down the other end of the house but he was that one's gone he was fascinated with the diamond painting he couldn't see he could well he couldn't see the symbols but he was watching what I was doing and when I was stood up a couple of times you know I've held it back so that he could see it try and get the true picture of it but he was mesmerized by me just putting these pieces of plastic onto a onto, onto, onto piece of paper. <laughs> uh, he, he spent a while just watching, but we were, I mean, we were talking, but he was, yeah, he was fascinated that I was doing that. Um, 
but yeah. Uh, so, actually, before we sat down that night, we had the afternoon because the next day we were coming, heading back home. Um, you know, Nathan was complaining because there was nothing to do. Well, he, we'd done, he'd done more stuff around the house for the folks for, and um, nothing left to do. So I turned around and said, well, instead of, like I, I, yeah, I disappeared every chance I could to go and see Bub. But instead of leaving him sitting at the house, which was driving him nuts because he wasn't, when they didn't have anything to do, it was driving him nuts. Um took him for a visit all the way around uh, Esperance. I took him on the tourist loop, got him to do the tourist loop. And while doing that loop, I took photos of some of the beaches. So I'll show you some of the beaches here. Uh, some are absolutely beautiful. And some of those that are absolutely beautiful are very dangerous in the weather condition we were having high swells I think it was six meter swells and all that so it was not not good conditions to be on in the water uh, you do find though that you get the surfies the surfies love it they get down there and do a lot of surfing uh, but yeah so I've got we've done the tourist loop taken quite a few pictures which um, yeah I mean you can't get much more picturesque than, than Esperance and its beaches. Uh, I think the last, I think it was the last beach we stopped at was actually uh, the local, what they call, which is the actual local free beach. Way too, way too cold for anybody to use it. I don't know many people that do use it. I've not seen anybody yet on the free beach. Not that I've gone looking, but just haven't seen it. So I do believe people do go on there because I've heard heard people do use the beach, but they're not for me. <laughs> I don't think that was any for anybody in that weather. It's cold, miserable. Had some good moments where the sun came out and had some horrible moments where the sun was just not going to come out. Um, but I don't, didn't get rained on, which was good. That one's gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we went around and had hugs with baby. Now one, there was one, ah, there was one morning, actually there was one morning there on our last full day. I've actually gotten, uh, went to a photo shoot for, for Bubs. Now the photo shoot was just myself, my son, my daughter-in-law and Bub. Due to the COVID situation, there was a restriction on how many people were allowed in the studio at a time. So uh, yeah, that was all there could be. Couldn't take Nathan to, to be in part in the photos. Uh, to, couldn't take my mum and my stepfather either. Um, but yeah, I had a bit of extra bit of time with Bub when we did that, which is good. Um, yeah. On and then we came back home on the way back. On the way back, it was quite amazing. We had some rainbows and they were there was double rainbows and they were basically it looked like we were that close to them um, um, it was yeah amazing to see so there's some double double rainbows um, made the comment that <laughs> yeah made the on the way back we went by And so we went a different way back uh, just to give Nathan a little bit something different. Uh, he's been wanting to go to Wave Rock, 
So I turned around and said, if we go via Hyde and we can go visit Wave Rock, so you get to see what's there. Um, we are planning to do a camping trip that will, um, Wave Rock is part of that drive that we're going to do. We're going to do the uh, Holland track. Uh, eventually. Um, but yeah, we stopped at Wave Rock. I did go right up the top above the rock. There's signs there saying, you know, caution, go back. The um, un, uh, invisible, I can't quite recall. I'll show you the picture here. But basically you couldn't see, you could not tell where Wave Rock actually stopped at the top where you could actually walk over and possibly fall down um, to this massive drop. There's some pictures of, uh, I will blank out his face, but there's pictures of Nathan surfing the wave rock. Um, I think he got some pictures of me. I'm not quite sure. I, I know I handed him in, in my phone, so he may have taken a couple of pictures of me um, via the phone. So we went wave rock. We did the walk around to Hippo's Yawn. Nathan, it's like, I don't really see it. I, I, I don't really see it. And then he goes, what I can see is if I put my head in the right position and you take a picture, it's going to look I've, look like I've got a head of hair. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> he's as bald as. Bald as on top. Um, yeah, and then we drove home. And on the way home, we saw the most amount of kangaroos for the whole trip. Um, that is, though, <laughs> that's only a five-minute drive from where we, uh, where our home. We actually do live in an area where there are lots of kangaroos. So we see more kangaroos in the city than we, well, not in the city, but where we live um, than we did the whole time we were away. Um, but yeah, that was basically it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the pictures that I've shared. I'm actually starting to get a croaky voice and completely lost track of where I'm going with my drills. That looks right knew what symbol I had, just had to follow the pattern. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully, yeah, as I said, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the images of Esperance. Um, I will pop in one picture of me holding Bub, um, which was taken on the morning we left, because we did stop there before we left town. We stopped there on the way. Um, and I got my last cut off from, from him. So, yeah. so guys, um, that's it. That's it for the, the trip. I will say thank you for joining me yet again. Hopefully you enjoyed the pictures. Uh, I will say um, comments below. Even if you comment on that snake. Um, <laughs> that's cool to see. Snakes don't worry me. Scare the hell out of Nathan, but they don't worry me. Um, uh, yeah, so guys, thank you for watching. Leave your comments. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And uh, if you're new to my channel, hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button and become one of the uh, precious gems that I have uh, that tune in and listen to me yak away at times. I'm trying to pick up a drill here. And uh, yeah, I will say bye for now.